Hey everybody, in this tutorial we're going to cover the basics of motion clip editing in Crazy Talk Animator 3. In case you weren't aware, Crazy Talk Animator 3 comes included with a whole bunch of motions, template motions that you can access from your content manager over here under animation. And uh, we're going to explore a couple of those, uh, a few of those actually momentarily. But first of all, let's get, all, let's get into the basics of things, just adding clips to your character. So right now what I have on the screen right now is our front facing elastic folks male character. And the animations that you can apply to him can be found in the animations tab under motions under Elastic Folks Front, and you'll have these ones included, whether or not you have the trial version or the pipeline version, uh, comes included with all versions, These uh, this motion library here. So let's talk about how to add clips to your character, how to animate them right off the bat. So what I'm, what I'm gonna use is I'm gonna use this, these three laughing motions right here. You can see the one S, that stands for start, the L stands for loop, and the E stands for ending. They're also num numbered one, two, and three as well for uh, ease of use. And the first thing we're going to do as well is press F3 so, so we can go into the timeline. If you have your character selected, your uh, character's timeline should pop up right, right off the bat. And you want to go into the motion track right here. So the motion track, all our motion clips are going to appear in the motion track right here. So let's go ahead and just double click one of these motions here, the laughing start. If I double click that, you can see our character will get into his laughing pose and it, start, it adds a motion clip right here. You can see laughing, 1S, the title right there. And then we have uh, some other stuff that I'll talk about momentarily, including the uh, time warp and the uh, transition curve. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to uh, uh, click and drag a motion onto my character as well. So you can click and drag from the library just like this. And that'll apply the loop, the looping motion. So this is him just laughing like that. And you can also, you know, apply the ending motion as well. So if we uh, double click apply the ending motion, it'll say fail to load motion. That's because we need to click our character first because we can't apply it to nothing. So we need to make sure we have our character selected and just double click that. And there's our ending motion. Now, if we wanted to undo that ending motion, we didn't want that. For example, we kind of added it by accident. We can press control Z and that'll undo it. And if we decide again, or we're a little finicky, we decide, oh, I want to add that back again. I can press control Y to do a redo. So control Z is undo, control Y is to redo. Now you may have noticed that these separate clips, you can click on them separately, they added one after the other. That's because the previous motion finished playing and I just simply added them from the content manager. Um, what you can do is you can move these clips around. So click and drag them around like this. And if I play back like this, but by pressing the space key, where there's not a motion clip, he will remain stationary, just like a mannequin challenge or something like that. Okay. And what you can do is you can click and drag this and notice that when I, when I close in on the second clip, it kind of just snaps right to the second clip, just like this. So it'll snap to the last frame. This little area here is called, called the transition area, which I'll talk about a little bit later. But if you don't want it to snap, you can go up here to edit and go to preferences. And at the bottom, you can disable timeline clip snapping, just press okay. And then if we go do this now, you can see we can just, uh, you know, move it a lot smoother than before. And if you have auto snapping on in the timeline, you can actually hold the shift key while you move your clip to avoid the snapping temporarily. Okay, so to expand on the uh, naming of the clips earlier, I mentioned there's a linear right here. This little thing here, this little doodad represents the transition curve. Uh, we'll talk about that later. And this clock here represents the time warp. So uh, just keep that in mind. Now there's one final way you can add stuff to your uh, to your timeline. So say for example, I'm like right here, I click on this uh, ending clip right here, and I don't want this ending clip, I want something else. Well, what I can do is I can delete this clip by pressing the delete key or right clicking and selecting delete up here, or I can just replace it by going over here and maybe replacing it with something like, uh, I don't know, this thinking end. If I hold alt and I click and drag this over, it'll actually replace that clip that I had earlier. Um, now this one probably won't be suitable for this situation too much. You can see there's a little bit of uh, you know, clipping right there. So what I wanna do is replace it with the previous clip that I had there before, which was the laugh end. So I can hold alt again, click and drag, and click and drag it onto my character. And it'll replace that previous example just like this, okay? So now we have a nice transition back to the end of our laugh. Cool, so that's really all there is to adding clips to your scene. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna delete all these clips. You can just simply click and drag. I'm gonna click and drag in the sprite and layer tracks as well and just delete everything pretty much. You can also right click your character and select remove that object animation. It's kind of a faster way to do it if you have nothing else on the timeline. But uh, what, what I'm gonna do now is talk about blending clips. So for blending clips, I'm gonna add a couple different clips here. I'm gonna go to Elastic Folks right here and under Emotion, we have a surprise motion somewhere down here. There's QRST 
There we go, surprised. So you can see him go woo, just like that. And then we're gonna add a uh, crying motion. So maybe there's this guy got surprised and started crying. So there's a crying uh, loop motion I'm just gonna add here. Double click that. And then finally, I'm going to uh, have a move and a jump. So maybe something startled him and he's or he's jumping for joy after he's been surprised. Uh, there we go, jump at the top there. And we'll just add that in as well. So now our complete motion will be like this. And you can see a couple things wrong with this. It kind of clips just like this um, from one, one from one motion clip to the other. Now the way we can avoid that is we can actually blend these together. So the cool thing about these motion clips is probably the most powerful feature is you can blend them together. So I'm going to just basically separate these a little bit. And you can see in between it will remain motionless. Now you don't have to put distance between the clips if you don't want to. You can actually just go ahead and uh, put them together just like this. But this little area here, this is called the transition area. And if you click and drag the edge of the clip, this transition area right here, you can see it will expand. And we can go something like this. And then you'll have a nice smooth transition from here to there, as opposed to the clipping that we had before. And you can click and drag the transition area as long as you want. And there you go. And it just like uh, goes over to that end like this. And you can make it shorter if you want. And then whoop, so that may be a little bit smoother. Whereas before, we just had the, you know, the single frame transition just like this, which was uh, very rigid and not very cartoon-like at all. So we don't want that snapping. We want that smooth transition from one motion clip to the other. Cool. Okay, so let's do the same thing for the third clip. I'm just going to click and drag and move this over. This one I'm going to leave a little bit further out. So we can actually just drag the transition area over the blank area where there's no motion clips and have something like this. Whoops. Actually, press current frame there. Right. So you can see the transition now is a little bit longer from here to here. You can make it shorter, just like at the end. And voila, there you go. So now we have these three clips blended nicely together. Okay, whereas before they were clipping, uh, very rigid. Now we have them blending nicely together. Now what I'm going to talk about is how you can loop and change the speed of your motion clips. So for this one, I'm going to just right click my character, remove object animation, and I'm going to add a couple more uh, motions here from the same library. We're going to go over here to perform and he has a nice dance. So I'm going to use the dance start right here, the dance loop, and the one below it is the dance end as he does, as he does his little, you know, kind of weak dance. But anyways, uh, so here we go. So we have this dance begin. Just looping like that, do 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 do, and dance end. So what we can do here is we can actually modify the. Let's actually take a look at the middle uh, dance clip right here. So we'll just move this dance end over to somewhere over here. Now, if I play back, press the space key, you can see the speed of the dance right there. Now, if I want to change the speed of this uh, dance, I can go ahead and make sure I have this toggled on. Alt S makes make sure speed is toggled on, and I can click and drag the edge of my clip to make it faster or slower. So when I do that, you can see he'll dance a lot faster, or I can make him dance in slow motion, something like this, by clicking and dragging it way out, just like that. Okay, and if you want to reset the speed back to normal, back to the default value, you can just right-click your clip, and you can select Reset Speed, and that'll reset it back to the original value that you had before. Okay, and if you want to loop this, so you want him dancing for a little bit longer, let's actually make the speed a little bit faster, and let's go here and select loop. You can also use the Alt L hotkey. So I'm going to loop this clip and this will loop it flawlessly for three rounds. So then we have something like this. Do, 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 do. And he'll dance for even longer. We can make him dance for as long as we want, as long as we continue to loop that motion clip. Now keep in mind that when you loop it, these, these will all be connected as one single motion clip. Okay. So when you loop something, they'll all be com combined into the same motion clip, just like that. If you want, you can just like, you know, right click and break your clip and break it into two separate clips and then, you know, delete the second half and you can have half of the uh, end of the dance just like this. So then we have, and maybe we want to stretch that transition area a little bit and have a nice smooth return to our dance end. Okay, so that's really a quick uh, overview of speed versus loop. Now, the last thing I want to talk about is time warp versus transition curve. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to uh, add those dances that I uh, previously had again. So we're going to go back to frame one here and add dance one here and dance two and then dance three. And what I'm going to add at the end here is I'm actually going to add something else. I'm going to add a step to the side. So we're going to go to the move folder here and there is a uh, step to the left or the step to the right, whatever we want. Okay. And you can see the step to the right. It's kind of like just a very you know simple step to the right. Now, 
say for example we wanted to change when most of the action in this clip occurs. So we wanted him to maybe step faster at the beginning and then kind of smooth out closer to the end. Well you can see the clock here beside the clock says linear on this clip and that's our time warp. So our time warp is currently very linear from one point to the next. There's no change. There's no graduation or anything like that. So if I right click on this clip and I select time warp you'll be able to experiment with the different types of time warp. And this is very nice because you can actually add some more dynam dynamic movement and cartoon-like movement to your, to your motions by using, these, uh, by using these time warps here. So if I select smooth, for example, you can see that most of the action will occur in the middle. There's a, a, a larger gradient uh, in the middle, and it kind of eases out closer to the end. If I have damping, you can see that all that action will have at the very beginning, right off the bat, and gain momentum before the move is kind of like that. So he'll kind of gain momentum and then move later, later on. And this one's kind of like a stuttering. So you can see he'll start stutter at the beginning and stutter at the end. So very nice cartoon-like movement. This may seem a little bit stiff for this character, but you can, you know, have a lot of fun doing all sorts of, using, experimenting with all these different uh, time warps. And that's basically the time warp. You can use these presets we have right here. You can have them start just like that. And this one step, just one point to the next point, just like that. Okay, so nothing really happens. And then we have our linear. I kind of like to use smooth. It's kind of like an ease in and ease out. You can also adjust the strength of this as well. If you want to have like, uh, you know, a, a stronger transition for the smooth, just like that, you can see whoop, the middle is very, very fast, just like that. And if you want to, you know, restore that back to the regular value, nice smooth ease in and ease out, you can set the strength back to 50 and have that nice smooth transition from one step to the next. Okay, so let's talk finally about the transition curves. Okay, so the transition curves, uh, let's take a look at the transition curve between the end of the dance and our step right here. Okay, so there's a lot of like, uh, at the beginning of this step right here, there's a lot of, you know, uh, not very much motion going on right here. Say for example, we wanted to, uh, you know, have a transition. Let's right click on our clip right here. I'm gonna break it. I wanna kind of delete this stuff because I want a faster and a more interesting transition between the end of this clip and this point right here. So we can actually delete the first half of this clip here the, or the first quarter of it or whatever. We can take this final step to the right clip and we can expand the transition area way over here, okay? Midway through the end of the dance. So then we have a nice, a long, smooth transition from here to here. And you can see the transition currently, this is the transition area, it says linear. So from here to here, it's very linear, just from one to the next. There's not really any speed changes or anything like that. Well, we can adjust that as well by right-clicking and selecting transition curve. And we'll come up with the same box here with the same options for transition curve. If we change this to something like accelerate, you can see it'll have less motion at the beginning. It'll kind of get into it, accelerate as it goes along, decelerate, a lot of motion at the beginning, less motion at the end, smooth. It's a nice transition, the stuttering. So if he's like, you know, did it, did it, like a robot getting ready to run, you can use the stuttering effect or something like that. Uh, the stutter start might be good as well. So like, and then you can take off like a woodpecker or whatever, the Roadrunner, that's his name, uh, in Looney Tunes cartoons, a very Looney Tune type uh, type animation. Uh, but you can, you know, have all sorts of, uh, you know, experimentation with uh, with these different transition curves, depending on the result you're trying to achieve. And, uh, you know, we can start with end with a bounce and then see what happens from here. If we just go ahead and press space. Okay, so it kind of goes like, ready, do, do. Just like that, okay? So you can have really cartoon-like animation on your characters just by experimenting with the transition curves and the uh, motion or the time warps in your motion clips. And that's really about all I wanted to cover in this tutorial. That's the basics of uh, motion clip editing. It's fairly simple, very easy uh, to create your own dynamic and cartoon-like uh, animations just by using these motion clips alone. Um, so hopefully you learned a lot in this tutorial. Thanks so much for watching. Uh, check out our forums as well and our uh, YouTube channel, and I'll see you in the next video.